Here we are, Jeremy. This is going to be so fun. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. So Jeremy and I have decided to venture down this quirky kind of, it's definitely a serious topic, but it's got kind of its unique, um, obscure, kind of abstract perspective that we thought would be really interesting to navigate. Do you want to tell people this group of interesting characters we're, we're going yeah. to look into yeah. today? So we're going to do cult leaders today. Cult leaders. Last, last oh, I got time. goosebumps. Last time we did uh, serial killers. Mm -hmm. And boy, when we got off that call, we were both like, oh, <laughs> So this energy is kind of different today, isn't it? It's kind of it, it's kind of um, fascinating to see um, and look into the charts of these individuals, and and just kind of see where their minds were, mm -hmm. just kind of see what they were thinking and what their motivation was during all of it. So, yeah, I actually did a chart reading for a gentleman um, a few months ago, and I, it was really weird because in the reading I was like, oh my gosh, you could totally be a cult leader. <laughs> but it was it, it wasn't like because you're weird it just he he had this power and actually I should have probably pulled his chart even to have this out on the side to look at but there was something about his ability to lead the masses you know and and in that not necessarily in a in a bad way but even just you know where he could totally had such an esoteric way of seeing the world that other people could you know and we're, and I think too in this time, I mean, we're sitting here, it's, it's June of 2021. Mm -hmm. We're seeing a lot of conspiracy type conversations that are typically that stuff is kind of more underground, but because of the internet and because of just the last thing, the things that have happened over the last few years, yeah. and especially with the rat kind of coming out with secrets last year, this kind of talk is, is more mainstream. It is. You know, and so I think it's it's worth being aware and doing your due diligence um, of, you know, researching people. There's a lot of times I tell clients with specific charts, it's like, you know, you have to do your due diligence and make sure that this path you're going down, you've researched, that you're not following blindly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I think that that's, that's <clears throat> very prevalent right now. There's a lot of different philosophies happening and a lot of different opinions about the philosophies. And then you have to take into consideration people's backgrounds and what kind mm -hmm. of philosophies they're going to follow based on their backgrounds. Um, and so this is an interesting topic for the day because we do see a lot of this activity happening right now. Mm -hmm. You have to know the, what the motivation is for the person who's, who's putting this out front. What is their, because not everybody has, a, not everybody's motivated from a good place, right? Some people are motivated right. because of power or greed or, you know, um, maliciousness. So you just need to know what people's motivations are. Yeah. Because um, I think it's it's worth tapping into these different things and looking at them and seeing what people are talking about. But um, so let's get started. We've got five characters. And what's interesting is I was trying to think of... Because I'm like, gosh, isn't there a female? I'm not sure if if it's... There is actually a female. She's very famous right now. She just actually passed away, uh, I think, a couple of years ago. I should do more research on it. But yeah, she... We can maybe look at her her chart next time. But okay. Yeah, there, okay. There is a female that's actually in the news right now. But okay. Because I thought, you know, we only did male serial killers and now we're only doing, we don't want to, we don't want any letters. We're not bashing men. No, we're not. <laughs> we picked no. some that are stood out. There's a couple we couldn't access, you know, information. And so this is what we got. So mm -hmm. let's get started here. I'm going to share my screen so we can look at their charts and we'll just go th through them one by one here. And we're gonna beginning with L. Ron Hubbard. Yeah. Yeah. So L. Ron Hubbard, of, uh, for those who don't know, or who've been under a rock, I guess, um, <laughs> is, <laughs> is the cult leader and uh, leader and founder of the Church of Scientology. One of the largest, um, well, it's not the largest religion, but it's very wealthy. It's one of the wealthiest religions in the world. 
He's also the author of Dianetics, which is, um, I guess you would call it their book of scripture or the book that they refer to in the religion of Scientology. Scientology became a religion around 1953, right around the time he was 39 years old. So he was in the, the uh, luck pillar of the fire pig. And, um, and then he died of a stroke. Oh, and then um, in his 40s and 50s, he actually went to go live um, on a ship. And he spent most of his time at sea because he was evading authorities and evading mm. different, different territories that he was in trouble in. And then he died of a stroke from what we know, a stroke that the, um, the details of his death are kind of interesting. They're, they're kind of mysterious because uh, the church followers that were around him at the time of his death wanted to keep things really hush hush, but it is said that he died of a stroke in 1986. Mm -hmm. Which is possible with that low fire in his chart, because fire governs the blood, the circulatory yeah. system, and the heart, huh? Yeah, that's what I. That was going to be my first, my first thing was uh, his luck. What you control is very low. Mm -hmm. Which can explain why he wanted to control so many people. Yeah. Yeah. So let me change my to a different little highlighting tool here. So what, what Jeremy's referring to here is his master element is water. And ideally what we're looking for, or through feng shui, what we want to kind of assist our clients with or people with is balancing this element wheel. Um, and the total is always 100%. So having an even distribution of 20% in each element would, be, you know, would, you know, hopefully play out in more of a balanced, you know, even keel kind of experience or life or day or relationships. Um, so you can see that some of these are, are higher than they need to be and then some of them are, are quite low. Water in the five element theory wants to put out fire. That's what its natural job is, right? Is to put, find problems and put them out. And he has little fire to control. And so, you know, I know Jeremy and I've talked about this before. When, when there's little to control, you seek things to control. You create fires to put out, mm -hmm. you know, when you're, when you're in this kind of dynamic here. Because if his fire was high, it would be like, oh, I found my purpose. I know where I belong and what I'm supposed to do. And it's funny that he's out on a ship in the water. Exactly, with all of that water. You know, trying to navigate and, and, and find his way. Yeah. So intriguing. And how we know this is his master element is from this pillar right here. So in all of us, the, the element that sits on, on the top of our day pillar is called our day master. And that's how we know that. So where do you want to go to next? Well, I, I find it also interesting that when you look at what supports him is the percentage of metal mm -hmm. and that's the highest in his chart. And when you have that high percentage in your chart that is supportive and especially in the element of metal, you're going to have a lot of financial backing. You're going to have a lot of support from a lot of people. Mm -hmm supporting the element, um, supporting your day master element. That's a good point. And metal is money, mm -hmm. too, on top of that. So he's got plenty of resources um, to, to pull from and, and to access. Interesting yeah. perspective. The other thing that I wanted to go back to when it comes to um, his control when you look at the his day pillar and we look at where um, the element of what his spouse would be, it's very indicative of his um, percentages mm -hmm. up there. Yang water, which is what he is, which is a representation of the ocean. It's vast, it's mm -hmm. endless, it's, it's so deep. But when you look at yin fire, which would be like a, a match, like a, a small flame. Yeah. The relationship he was in, he would be all encompassing. Mm -hmm. and he, out that kind of fire yeah young water just uh, yin fire doesn't have a chance right no it's like mm -hmm. building a campfire on the beach and then the tide comes mm -hmm. in you know it's it, it's just not gonna work you can see how his approach would be to control and controlling mm -hmm. others especially in relationships absolutely 
and he might might have even learned, you know, easily that it, it works, how effective he is. Mm-hmm. And then build on that power. Yeah. His, wow. his, his, uh, his animals are kind of interesting as well. Mm-hmm. Which one stands out the most? Well, the ox and horse, which is a damage. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, the ox is slow and steady. We're in the year of the ox right now. It's slow and steady, easy does it. It's very strong and steady energy mm-hmm. that's very grounded. Where the horse, the horse just wants freedom. The horse wants to run free. Mm-hmm. And when you have that dynamic between how you feel inside your emotional body and then your physical body, there's gonna be a push pull that's going on constantly in your mm-hmm. life. Yeah, it's, I mean, that's really interesting that he has that ox there. Um, because it, I think if they were swapped, if they were switched, you know, if he had a horse in that first pillar, he'd be mm-hmm. so much more reactive and probably more self-destructive, mm-hmm. you know, because he would be so reactive and like, you know, get off course and, but the ox just keeps him so consistent. And I bet he was a really tough read, you know, to be able to even for others around him to figure out, you know, who, who is he and where's he coming from? And, you know, where's the, you know, when's he going to get upset? Not that he doesn't, but he just seems like a really tough read. And you're right, that push pull, when you've got that kind of energy between your emotional body and your physical body, you know, which one's going to win, which one has, has to give. Yeah. Yeah. Um, another thing that I noticed about his animals is he's got the combination of the horse and the rabbit, which is also, it's not as much as a, it's, it's not the same energy as a damage, but it is breakup kind of energy, which would, which would say to me, since his day master is his identity, his identity and, and his body connecting to his family Mm. would kind of a, kind of a break energy. So that Mm. would be indicating that he had kind of a breakup energy with his family. Yeah, breaking free, like you said, free spirited. Mm-hmm. I'm always intrigued by this this pig energy, you know, here in his mm-hmm. year pillar. The pig is, you know, often sees the world in, in their own in their own way, you know, oftentimes not seeing the reality that everybody else is tapping into. And so, you know, part of their job is to bring people into their reality and convince um, people that that's that's the way it is because they don't want to be wrong because that then that means they were gullible and that means they got taken advantage of. Right. And again, that yin metal is connected to that high metal energy. So mm-hmm. it's, it, it's interesting that he wrote the playbook on how, mm. how <laughs> to do the Church of Scientology and why they're so monetarily successful. Mm-hmm. I find that really interesting because pigs really love luxury. They love yes. knowing that they have, you know, that that celebrity lifestyle is very appealing to a pig. So it's no surprise that he targeted celebrities so that that could boost up mm. his reputation. Yeah, the opulence of the the things around him and a lifestyle that, you know, was really like we went back up here. It was being supported by other people. Absolutely. You know, not so much himself. And it's, you know, his, with his, you know, looking at his other elements, his, you know, his output was low, Mm -hmm. you know, and so that's a little bit self-defeating. That's a little bit like why bother? Mm -hmm. And he was able to take kind of what, I don't know if somebody planted a seed in him and he kind of went with it or he read something um, where this metal really is what he became. Oh, yeah. I think. Well, and I think that also when you have that high of a support element, um, this is also someone who isn't going to do the dirty work himself. He's going to delegate. Mm. Wow, that's brilliant. He's going to delegate it to people. Um, mm-hmm. When I was doing your training, we looked at Donald Trump's chart, and his is very similar. He has a very large support element 
which indicates they're not going to do the dirty work themselves. They don't necessarily need to be the spotlight of the business. Mm -hmm. They're going to let someone else do that. Yeah. Yeah, this speaks a, a, a bit of that narcissistic trait of gimme, gimme, gimme. Mm -hmm. You know, it's me. It's all about me um, it, and not about what I'm contributing to the world. It, it's it's really because, I mean, if you look, six, you know, 65 percent of the chart of 100 percent is just in this energy relationship right here. Yeah. What can you do for me? Yeah. And then so you, you have that be part of my religion. Mm -hmm. And then you get this, you know, this kind of narcissistic trait of the pig and then the arrogance of the horse and the ox in there. Mm -hmm. And then he's got this, this, he's got a, you know, there's a tenderness to him though, which is probably, you know, I'm sure that people who knew him or maybe he, it was a manipulative kind of, of way, but he, I, and maybe there's a belief because this is his belief systems here is that he was doing what he thought was best, you know? Yeah. And especially with the combination of the rabbit being in the family pillar and then the ox and the emotional pillar, he was very strong emotionally. Mm -hmm. One who has an ox in their emotions pillar, they're going to, they're, they're going to have those strong emotions and they're going to stick to their guns when it comes to them. Yeah. Interesting too about the the luck pillar he was in during his death, right? Yeah. Go right, right around, right around uh, his death at the age of seventy four. He was getting an increase of that water element. Mm hmm. Yeah, and then the goat ox clash. Mm hmm. Yeah, and anytime there's a clash in the chart, it represents a huge change, major change. Mm -hmm major yeah. change of direction yeah big shift mm -hmm. now so that was he was 74 so that was 1985 huh. you know it'd be really interesting to actually look at i don't remember the guy who took over mm -hmm. kind of pushed himself in and, and took over that position but i it feels to me like a lot of where this guy this current kind of leader of this church is going is he's the one that like really leveled it up like i would love to see his chart we really should have pulled his chart huh yeah, yeah. to see how because i wonder if if l ron hubbard was still alive and in charge if it would be at the if the church would be at the the level it is now and be so controversial yeah i i don't know i don't know i mm -hmm. i imagine that david miscavige probably has a lot of firing mm-hmm from what, from, I mean, if you watch the the hit TV show, um, I forgot what it's called, but Leah Remini is the host so of it. So good. So good. Oh so in, a lot of good information there. And she really dissects how it is a cult and how um, the effects of the cult were, um, how she felt the effects of the cult. But it's interesting when, when, the, when L. Ron Hubbard is talked about, um, how his energy, he was very elusive. He was very kind of behind the scenes. It was very rare that he was seen by his followers. Mm. So. Interesting. I also took some notes that, you know, a lot of, I was trying to, you know, oftentimes what we're doing here is we're kind of looking for patterns too. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we know that a lot of his stuff was, it, he was very esoteric you yeah. know, around the alien symbolism. Mm -hmm. I'd even read that he wrote an opera for for yeah. space. You know, he was he was very um, obscure, very eccentric. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm you know I'm trying to I can see that how that could be definitely that ox energy and his emotional pillar, mm -hmm. um, and and even the pig. Um, a couple of these guys that we're pulling, you know, have there's that alien, you know, other world yeah. um, in music. You know, music seems to be a theme where they're all quite, you know, obsessed with music in some way or mm -hmm. another. Yeah. And so, gosh, people are just so fascinating. And of course, we can't we don't know what. You know, you know, being born in 1911 is is a different period. That's a different generation. We don't yeah. know his upbringing. We don't know so much about him and how 
that shaped who he is and the decisions that he made as an adult. Right. This is and just, all of the generational things that were happening. Yeah, especially here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to clear this and we'll move on to Charles Manson. Charles Manson, interesting, interesting individual. So he was um, the cult leader uh, in 1967. He formed the Manson Family Commune in California. Um, his followers committed nine murders in 1969. He was convicted of conspiracy to commit murder for seven of the deaths of the nine, including actress Sharon Tate. Um, he, uh, let's see, he, uh, he was sentenced to death and his sentence was commuted uh, to life in prison where he died at age 83. Very interesting individual. Uh, he had, this is, this is the difference between um, someone who has a water day master and a fire day master, even though his day master is very low. Mm -hmm. um, fire energy is very alluring. It's very, um, <clears throat> what's the word I'm looking for? Um, his personality is very magnetic, mm -hmm. very energetic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> I think too, what I'm learning lately about fire energy um, is that it's always looking for a source. Mm -hmm. Right? Because it needs to keep itself going because it'll burn out if it doesn't. And so, um, and he has a ton of support, like we talked about with the last chart. But fire too, what is, it does is it, it consumes the oxygen out of the room. And mm -hmm. it will, you know, it'll burn other people out. It will make other yeah. people question or take the light from other people mm -hmm. um, to use it for its own, especially if it is low. Right, because it's it yeah. it needs to it needs to be far reaching and consuming and 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 big and destructive. Well, and also uh, it's yin fire. So again, we're talking mm. about a match, or um, in a sense, when we were going over Joe Biden's chart, Joe Biden had this energy as well. And when you're looking at yin fire, it's like there's a group of people in a cave, and the yin fire person is holding up the lantern to show people the way. Mm -hmm. So we can see how in that can work in a positive and how it can work in a negative. Yes. Charles Manson was definitely the kind of person that was showing people the way. Mm -hmm. right? But again, here's a, here's a man that didn't do the dirty work himself. <laughs> he had a lot of people. And when we, when we look at the wood element, which is his support, it's very, it's, it's a higher percentage. He had a lot of support. He had a lot of people doing his bidding. Yeah. Yeah. And that in a lot of times I want, you know, I would even be curious too, if even like his parents or if there wasn't some influence that was so great on him that we really got in him and made him, you know, feel inferior um, mm -hmm. or whatever. I even read that he had studied over 150 hours in Scientology Oh, really? Yeah. Um, but then found like he couldn't make a connection to it. So I thought that was a little, a little interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, like, like I was talking about, like with, um, he, he really didn't want to do his own dirty work. He did start little fires here and there. Mm -hmm. There was rumors that he was going to, one of the reasons why he wanted those people to kill who they did kill is he wanted to start a race war. That was the rumor anyway. Okay. So he was he was lighting little fires and then mm -hmm. walking away and letting other people fool them. Wow. Well, that speaks to one of the dog traits that I know about is delegating. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the dogs it's it's good for dogs to delegate. It's interesting because these three animals here you know the the pig and the dog. Mm -hmm. I always kind of find it funny that they have. They're probably the two animals that have the toughest time with boundaries. Yeah. You know, create establishing boundaries. The dog needs to do it for himself, mm -hmm. and the pig needs to do it for other people. Right. Um, I find that interesting. And then he's got this monkey here in his emotional pillar, which really lacks empathy. 
You Absolutely. know, that's when you watch videos of him and all of the footage. Yeah. He's got a crazy look in his eyes. He's saying crazy things. He's kind of cackling to himself, laughing. And there's, there's that monkey energy right there. Mm, yeah. Like stirring up some shit and giggling okay. as he walks away, which is very confusing. I would imagine um, he was a very confusing character as well because the dog and pig are, are, are very caring, very nurturing, mm -hmm. very compassionate. And so he's projecting himself to be one way on the outside when inside he's up to some monkey business and, you know, got some planning going on. Yeah. Well, and having that double pig, that's kind of an interesting energy as well, because um, when you've got that double pig energy between, you know, your, your body and physical self and your mind, um, it's all about what I want. Me, me, me. Mm -hmm. what, can I do me? what can I do um, to further myself? What can I do to further my own agenda? Yeah, and the pig doesn't like the word no. It doesn't mm -hmm. know, you know, and that's part of the boundary issue. Mm -hmm. it's, it's indulgent. It doesn't know when to stop. It just um, and keeps, keeps, you know, it's kind of, you know, like it's digging for the truffles, you know, the next best little nugget of, of something good. Which is, again, no surprise why they targeted a celebrity. Mm. Because it's that notoriety. It's look at me kind of energy. Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant connection there. And around the age of, around when he turned 33 is mm -hmm. when he um, formed the commune. Or, yeah, when he turned 33 is mm -hmm. when he formed the commune, when he formed the cult. Um, and then at the age of 83 is when he, when he died. Again, there's, there's a lot of different versions of his death and it's not very clear how he died but he did die um during a water goat pillar um which upped the percentage of his water which is what controlled him so that water all of that excess water energy is what took him out mm -hmm. i wonder you know look at this this water fire relationship with his mother yeah water fire those arrows aren't working very well relationship with the you know spouse energy mm -hmm. you know so female you know energy puts him out water energy wants to put him out and put him yeah. in his place mm -hmm. and wasn't it mainly women that he he had in his coat yeah. yep hmm. I, can't, I don't remember how many of the the murders were women but of course Sharon Tate was one of them mm -hmm. so also, was he was a songwriter mm -hmm. and he I, I guess some even popular musicians recorded his music yeah and he was heavily influenced by the Beatles and the mm. Helter Skelter lyric of one of the oh, Beatles oh yes that's right so, yeah he was heavily influenced by the Beatles which the Beatles were just like oh Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, don't don't pull us in. No, that, don't pull us into that. Mm -hmm. And that yeah. speaks to that pig energy that mm -hmm. is addictive. You yeah. know, typically when I see this, a pig in someone's chart, well, you know, I, I want to bring up the conversation around addiction, mm -hmm. whether it was within the family, you know, he's got it in his, his health pillar as well. But that's yeah. always, always worth looking at. Yeah. So fascinating. Yes. Okay. Jim Jones. This was an interesting one. This is one that I had completely forgotten about. Completely mm. forgotten about. And so as I was reading about him, I was not only fascinated, but totally aghast at what... It's amazing what one human being can do to influence people in such a negative way. So Jim Jones is the cult leader and preacher, faith healer, who led the People's Temple from 1955 to 1978. Um, and again, it started, he started the, the, the People's Temple at around the age of 24. Um, and he moved to, moved the center of the religion to uh, Guyana and took 
many followers to live there with him, uh, created a commune that was reported to be abusive. So when reports of the abuse of the people that were in this commune, uh, about around a thousand people, um, rep uh, US representative Leo Ryan took a team full of people, including mm -hmm. camera crew um, and reporters to go report on the abuses and while trying to leave um, the location, uh, they were targeted by locals that were said to be tied to the commune and murdered. They were all killed on the runway, um, getting on the plane. And um, which is what led Jones to coerce 918 commune members to drink Kool-Aid laced with cyanide. It killed all of them. Um, he was found with a gunshot wound to the head consistent with suicide at the age of 47. But it's, again, the circumstances of his death. It's possible that one of the followers shot him and then killed themselves. It's just mm -hmm. all kind of unclear. But mm -hmm. it's, again, amazing. In a 47-year life, yes. what reach he had. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the element, element percentages, it's not surprising. Right. I know he had some, you know, he began this journey too with his goal was a political, you know, he had, he was a Marxist. He, you know, wanted to create a socialist kind of society. Divine socialism is what he called it. Yeah. Um, now, L. Ron Hubbard, there wasn't, sex wasn't as involved where we know like mm -hmm. with Manson and even Jim Jones that there was some, you know, that you know inappropriate sex yeah. was involved there and that's what that, that's a lot of what the abuses that were being reported mm -hmm. and that were going back to the u.s mm -hmm. were were women getting taken advantage mm -hmm. of and children as well yeah so where do you want to go where does your eye go first on his chart um well of course the elements is where i start and the imbalance right off the right off the gate with the low um support and then low output Mm. Yeah. So 10% fire trying to support 30% earth and 30% with an output of only 15. Mm -hmm. That's going to make him feel isolated a little bit, huh? Way isolated since the earth energy is young earth, which is mountain energy. So it's like mm. a mountain, not surrounded by anything. Yeah. Feeling all alone. Yeah. No resources to pull from. He didn't have a bunch of donors. <laughs> you know, like L. Ron Hubbard. But when we look at age 24, he had young metal supporting and mm. lifting the percentage of that metal, which is what he was creating. It was his output. So he yeah. was seeing the results by creating this commune. Wow. Lots of structure and <clears throat> discipline around that. Yeah. Isn't that brilliant? Yeah, I mean, it. it is brilliant when you look at it, when, when, when you look at the thing that I love about Chinese astrology is that you can see where people's energy is and the phases of their life come in and then go out and mm -hmm. how the elemental percentages are supported by that. Yeah. Really kind of fascinating. Yeah. Uh, I'm never like surprised by this stuff. It's just... No. I'm just in awe of the consistency of the charts you yeah. know, that they, you know, people just make such a connection. Yeah, they do. Yeah. And now look at his water percentage. Look at his luck. It's almost effortless for him to control. Yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. This is, this is When I see a chart like this, it's like, it's like Midas, Midas energy. The, mm. the Midas touch. Anything he touched turns to turns to gold. Yeah. And since it's watery energy, it's very emotional. It's based on emotions, which is what that's how he played. That's how he played people. He played on their emotions. He mm. played on, on what it would be like for the people after they died. What it would be like for the people and their emotional evolution being part of this commune. Mm hmm. Goat um, or sheep is a is a, often a symbol associated with religion, right? Oh, interesting. And, you know, sheep sheep like to be shepherded. They like a leader, 
Mm -hmm. And but the a dragon is not a follower. Um, the dragon is the leader energy, and so the pig and the dragon moved his sheep more into a goat, which moves the goat or the black sheep out onto the fringe, right yeah. out of the herd, and becomes the one who's kind of leading. It's like you know what? I don't like where you guys are going. I'm going to go create my own thing over here. Oh yeah. Because in as we know, the dragon doesn't like to follow the rules. They're going to make up their own rules. They want yeah. to work the system. Yeah, and with his spirit animal being the the pig, and then his mind animal being the snake, there's a clash there. So his emotions, oh, yes. mind, they were constantly battling each other. Um, something that he would have a feeling to go do, his mind would say, ah, "I'm not sure about." Mm -hmm. That it's that kind of flash energy, and then vice versa. Man, I would, I bet he was just precise and sharp with his reactions to people, and I bet just with the tone and the delivery of his speech, he could just make people feel pretty, pretty, oh, yeah. you know, submissive or small. Um, no. with with because the the pig is can be quite blunt the snake is very venomous and strikes quickly mm. um he's got an interesting combination because to me the goat and the pig are are they want to be of service they're humanitarians but then he's got more of this you know self-serving snake dragon energy that really took the limelight that really moved in um, and, yeah. and was the seductor of, of the, the people. I have one thing I read about him I found really interesting. Hmm. Did you know that he imported and sold monkeys? No. Yeah, I saw pictures of him holding these little monkeys. And I guess there was a chimpanzee that was kind of their, their mascot for Jonestown. But yes. monkeys were always, always there. I wonder what age that was happening at because he was in that metal tiger. Oh, yeah. The tiger is opposite the, the monkey. So mm -hmm. maybe in the 20s is when he got that idea because that, that tiger will pounce on the monkey. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. I just can't. My eyes are just going all over his chart. I know. The other <laughs> caught my eye is that low wood which is his motivation and so this wasn't this wasn't a, a, a the kind of person that was easily swayed by anyone this is not someone mm -hmm. who can give him this is not someone that reverse psychology works on. <laughs> he's like the two-year-old toddler these days that's like really yeah. <laughs> you can't really? scare me <laughs> oh through that i'm doing what i want yeah, and so it's one of those things where he that dragon energy would rise up and lead because there's no convincing a dragon of anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's kind of an interesting chart. It's fascinating to look at these things. Yeah, yeah, he feels very hypnotic. Oh yeah, and and because of that dragon energy too. And even the 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 mysticalness of the snake, it's just it it's such an alluring energy because we're not familiar with dragon energy. And so when you're around somebody who has that energy in them, you're curious. You're like, oh wow, you're intrigued. It's like I want to be your friend. And that's kind of a pull. Um mm -hmm. and he really he was able to really use it to his benefit. Yeah, and it's I think that that strong earth energy was a grounding effect mm -hmm. on him. Yeah. People, people saw him as a stronghold that they could hold on to because he had all of that earth energy supporting. Yeah. It's funny. This is, I remember I was 11 or 12 years old and I, um, this was my first report in school in seventh grade. I think it was on Jonestown. I, it, really? was hap it was happening, you know, live in my life, you know, yeah. at that age. And I remember writing a book, a book report or a report on it and having to go to the library and the microfiche 
yeah. and scan for the you know prints on newspaper and stuff yeah. and articles. You couldn't Google it back then. <laughs> yeah, and Jonestown was was the name of the city or the the town or commune that he built. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, just it, it it's still on maps today if you look at it. Oh, really? But, yeah. It just is so absolutely intriguing that you can, and I know it's, although like you said, he was only 47 at the time of his death. He was yeah. able, it's not like L. Ron Hubbard who was, you know, in his 80s. Yeah. How was this guy able to convince, because he had I 911 mean, people. That's a lot of people compared to some of these others that, you know, they right. were murdering or took their own lives. Right. Right. Um, how do you, how do you convince, how do you bring that many people on board and, and create that much fear in them mm -hmm. and their belief that this is how to escape this, this, this time or this fear or this pending doom that's going to happen. Right. It's and just how absolutely these people to do that to 311 children. Mm -hmm. 300 of them were children, minors. Parents feeding yeah. their children mm -hmm. laced Kool-Aid. I mean, this is this is where a lot of people gather gain that term of drinking, mm -hmm. did you drink the Kool-Aid? Yeah. That's what it this situation it relates to. So and I know they ran suicide drills, you know, they would, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, okay, well, this is the time. And then they would go through this whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know, maybe it's, it's just like, well, I, I mean, from what I understand, suicide, um, cyanide is a very painful, painful, painful way, way to go. Yeah. Um, and I mean, he didn't take the Kool-Aid. No, he was found, he was found with the gun. Yeah. He had an easier way out, whatever that was. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this one makes me laugh. I mean, <laughs> you just look at his <laughs> I, I couldn't find a, a normal. Maybe this, uh, this is a normal yes, face. Uh, this no judgment. Is a normal picture. <laughs> I looked, too. This is how he looks in every picture. Oh, my gosh. Marshall Applewhite. Oh, man, what a crazy guy. Cult leader who co-founded Heaven's Gate religious group and organized their mass suicide. Um, he convinced 39 people with the approach of the hale -Bopp Comet that his late co-founder would be aboard a spaceship that would take he and his followers to another galaxy. They had to kill themselves to board this spaceship. 39 bodies were found at the scene and it was determined that they took barbiturates and alcohol uh, and then covered their heads with plastic bags. They were all dressed in the same outfit, including wearing Nikes um, and also uh, it was embroidered with their theme on, on the jacket of each of their outfits. And then, um, yeah, it, and again, the, the, his death, again, is all kind of a mystery. Did he die the mm. same way? Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of a mystery. When you when you read different things online about him, some are like he died with them. Some are like, oh, he had one of his followers kill him first. Like, it's one of those kind of situations. He's he's one of these these people. Because he kind of looks like an alien, right? He looks like somebody you'd see like on Star Trek in the 70s, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, from what I picked up, he had a he had a heart issue. And I don't yeah. know what year it was, but he had a near-death experience. He did. And, and he yeah. came out of it and a nurse told him, you have a purpose. Yeah. If, that you and that was his, was his co-founder. Oh, co the co-founder of Heaven's Gate, which ended, she ended up a couple of years before they organized the mass suicide. She died, and he, in a vision, saw her on the spaceship coming to get them. Okay. And she ended up dying of, she had her eye removed a couple of years before that and died of cancer. And he was worried that he had cancer as well, which okay. is what kind of spurred the whole mass suicide thing. Now, I'm, you know... 
I'm just going to put this out there on, you know, I understand that I could be seen as just as weird as Marshall Applewhite if I say this. <laughs> <laughs> but I believe in aliens. I believe, you know, what if, what if there was contact? You know, what if he, the veil was thin in a certain mm -hmm. um, universal realm that he was able to access? Maybe they did make it onto that ship, you know, on with those aliens by relieving their souls of these, these human bodies. I mean, this is, this is where my mind goes with a lot of this stuff. Yeah. You know, is like it, you know, we just live on kind of this linear plane and we all try to do our best to conform because it's just easier that way. What if, what if this was a reality and, and, and is a reality? Yeah. You know, it, I, I just find this kind of this this kind of person um, really fascinating. Well, I think it's really narcissistic to believe that we're the only planet in mm -hmm. our whole galaxy or in any other galaxy that it has life form. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. very narcissistic, narcissistic to believe that we're the only ones out there. Mm -hmm. That there's just yeah. no. And, it, you know, there's even a part of me that, you know, wonders about L. Ron Hubbard. But here's to me what I think what interferes is the, the human narcissistic brain. Yes. Right? Then we start trying to control this or we try to convince other people of this when maybe it is just a personal experience that you're supposed to have and you're the one that's supposed to jump on the tail of this comet and, and be yeah. there, but maybe not all these other people. And I don't know. Here, here again in Marshall's chart, we have that combination of metal and water mm. in this a master which is a very narcissistic combination me 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 both of those percentages are very high um he presents as a young water again he's the he's the ocean he's the vast ocean and having that higher percentage in the middle area is going to um give him a lot of support he's going to mm -hmm. have a lot of support he's going to have a lot of financial backing for what he needed. In fact, when they did the mass suicide, they had rented a gigantic mansion and found the followers all over the house. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So, um, yes, the whole thing is kind of fascinating when you look at the elements and he has a, a very, there's not one of these people that we've talked about today that have a major balanced chart. Mm -mm. There's major imbalances. Mm -hmm. And those imbalances can often happen in the brain, regardless of whether there's aliens or not. It's all about what you were saying before, that narcissism and that control of other people. Yeah. Yeah, he's got a clash here. Oh, yeah. You know, between the goat and the ox. Mm -hmm. Those two don't do things the same way. And so they're, um, they're misunderstood. They're confusing to people. Um, I read too, as opposed to the other four that we're looking at, mm -hmm. this guy actually was a very outgoing. He had a very positive upbringing, a very normal kind of life, and was actually quite popular in school, where mm -hmm. the others were more introverted, were bullied, made fun of, um, and really kept to themselves. He he was a, a, a bit different. Mm -hmm. um, more out there but uh, when you have a clash between how your life path wants your, your life path wants to go one direction and your emotional body is saying oh no i can't i won't be able to do that mm -hmm. and then even being you know the death during a dog mm -hmm. here um luck pillar kind of brings in that that tomb energy of of really shifting making a huge shift yeah. Do you know what the reason for the, I mean, like we know that Jonestown, right, they were kind of getting exposed and the authorities were questioning what they were doing. What was, was there like a, an impending date? Like, is this the comet yeah, was coming? It was the, com it was the okay. day the comet was flying over. Okay. It, it was all strategically timed. Okay. Interesting. And there, apparently there was a tip. One of the followers had tipped someone off and someone called the authorities and they were too late. Everyone was already dead by the time they 
they arrived at the scene. Wow. The other thing that I find really interesting that I was looking at is his relationship with his parents, um, mm. Yin Water and Yang Fire. Um, that Yang Fire would have really helped that low fire element. But again, he also died in a strong fire element as well. Mm -hmm. So it would be interesting to see what his, the relationship was like with him and his mother. Yeah, that's a... What effect she had on him. That's this but, relationship right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Yang Water and Yang Fire. Yang Fire is the sun and Yang Water is the ocean. So you've got two competing elements here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we see how that shows up up here. You know, she's the only place really that's the majority, seven and a half percent of that fire is from her. From her, yeah. And so he's, you know, it's definitely a power struggle. And maybe she just surrendered with him. It was easier just to let him be. You know, well, to certainly. me, it just feels like, you know, so many of these people who have, you know, whether it's, you know, some kind of schizophrenic, multiple personality where their detachment disorders, these things where they're, they're not living in our reality. That doesn't mean that the, re the reality they're living in isn't real, right? right. It doesn't exist. Yeah. And that's where I keep kind of seeing him kind of fit in here. Yeah. Is, and I do believe that there are people that are maybe, you know, their, their mental uh, challenges are severe and really, you know, detrimental. But mm -hmm. I also wonder what's the reality that you're really tapping into, that you're seeing that um, that we often dismiss as a crime or, you know, a, not reality. Yeah. Who are we well, to we, question? Yeah, and we can attribute a lot of that to a snake in his mind killer. And we have to remember also that the snake and the monkey are secret friends. So a lot of the physical impulses he was having were connected to his impulses in his mind. He mm. had an idea that was really, really smart. Or again, uh, having a snake in your mental pillar really connects you to spiritual energy. Snakes are very spiritual creatures. It's all about transformation, shedding the skin and mm. uh, transforming into something new. Yeah. Yeah, like that was the whole purpose, right? Shed your skin so that you can get on the ship. Right, and on the ship, he was also saying that the reason why they needed to kill themselves here was because they would be provided a new body when they got on the ship, a new alien body. Wow. So that that's where the snake plays in with that. So interesting. Now and I'm here again, when, when you look at pictures of um, Marshall Applewhite and also Charles Manson, they both have a monkey and that monkey shines through with their pictures. Kind of crazy eyes and crazy expressions mm -hmm. on their faces. Kind of bringing the humor to the situation. I think the monkey opened <laughs> up this talk more than the others. There wasn't a lot of monkey and monkey energy in this <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to keep a, an eye on my daughter, the double monkey. <laughs> I mean, we're seeing a lot of well, similar funny. animals. She doesn't have a lot of culty energy. No, though. she doesn't. She's a leader, but she's like, I'm on my own. You're not going to be able to keep up with me. Have the patience to corral other people. <laughs> you get bored with them. Yeah. But we are seeing a lot. I mean, just I've got everybody kind of laid out here. We're seeing pig, snake, and goat, mm -hmm. um, monkey, ox. You know, we're seeing that consistently. I think out of all of them, except for one, there's a pig in there. Yeah. You know, that kind of indulgence, uh, you know, self-satisfying, mm -hmm. um, you know, not really good at boundaries and knowing when to stop <laughs> yeah. kind of energy. So let's let's hit our, our last guy here. Okay. David Koresh. Yeah. Man, he was he young when he yeah. came out at the end of all of this. Yeah. Again, here's another example of someone who lived a huge life in a very short amount of time and influenced a large amount of people. Um, he's David Koresh is the cult leader who led the Branch Davidians, which is an offshoot of the Davidian 
uh, Seventh Day Adventist Church. Um, and in every publication that I read, it's it's not to be confused with the Davidian Seventh Day Adventist Church, a very different offshoot of that. Koresh claimed to be its final prophet. He had multiple counts of sexual abuse of minors and rape. He was uh, responsible for the siege at Mount Carmel Center in Waco, Texas, which lasted 59 days, resulting in the death of over 79 people, including Koresh. And here again, the, the event of his death and how he died is kind of unknown. There's multiple counts of seeing some of his followers kill him first and then kill themselves. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Yeah. Some of them, some of his followers though were killed in a fire. There was there was oh, a yes. fire involved, but then a lot of them killed themselves as well. Mm -hmm. Some of them died in a gun battle. He had a, a leap, he had a, a deadly gunshot wound. They're still unsure whether he died of the gunshot wound or if one of his followers shot him and then shot themselves. Yeah. Interesting chart. Again, mm -hmm. huge, huge imbalances. Um, I find it really interesting that his motivation came at the age of 24 when he was getting extra earth energy, which is extra support for him. Um, oh, interesting. Yeah. His motivation energy. Well, now, wait and, a minute. Something's wrong here. Oh, what? This right here should say yin metal. Uh oh. I missed that, I, and that, I and checked. that, and that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I checked everything, too. <laughs> well, it never ceases to amaze me. So this should be um, Yang Water here. Okay. I don't know if I can slide that over. This here should be... Yin metal. And this should be yang water. And this should be yin earth. Oh, okay. All right. Awesome. Okay. But everything else is correct on there. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So going back to what I was just saying, the motivation um, mm -hmm. when he was 24 years old, um, kind of going into the the cult or the religion. Uh, apparently, there was a fight between the the current leader of the, mm -hmm. the cult, and he kind of staged kind of a takeover and was successful in that. And he had support. A lot of the supporters that were already in the cult switched loyalties and went with him. Isn't that and interesting? And that's a, re, a total redirect of his life path, right? It is. That was a snake luck period with, which is an opposition of his pig yeah. saying, guess what? You get to be the leader now. Yeah. Which is dragon in, is just like, yes. Yeah, that dragon wants that individuality, that freedom to be a leader, mm -hmm. and whatever it wants to be. Yeah. I mean, these the pig, monkey, dragon, they really don't want to be told what to do. Mm -hmm. And I think that's and why it got it's so, stubborn. yeah, it got so ugly in Waco. And yeah. I, I know there's a lot of controversy that, you know, the FBI didn't handle that you know, in the best light. Mm -hmm. um, because I, both people, both sides, there were people that were, that were killed. Mm -hmm. the side on the FBI and then the side of the followers, there was a fire that was started. Like there were a lot of things that may have been mishandled. I, I don't know all of the mm -hmm. details, but um, that goat would have been really stubborn. Mm -hmm. Wanting to stand his ground and to get his way. Absolutely. I'm looking at his elements because I know that's kind of where we 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 have a tendency to start. Mm -hmm. You know how these two here 
are the highest. Mm -hmm. And that really sets him up, right? Because he's got, he's got the support. He's got lots of support there. So it's like, oh, that's easy, you know? And then, well, that, because like he didn't have to work to be the leader. Like these others oh. really had to build the following and, and put in their, their time because he was, yeah. you know, 24 when that happened. I think that's probably yeah. the youngest of all of them. Yeah. And when you look at the timeline, that happened really quick. Mm -hmm. The image I get in my brain about this is since, since his day master is 20% and he's supported and he's getting a lot of outcome, it's almost as though it was an easy rise to the top. But once he reached the top, it was bigger than him after that. And oh. it was a runaway train that he could no longer control. Because when you look down at his control and what controls him, mm -hmm. it its own entity and it ran away from him. Yeah, exactly. Like these are there to support him. But if he doesn't know what to do with it, yeah, because he doesn't have a voice or he doesn't know he's un insecure, which... Yeah. You know, there's a lot of insecurity in these animals. Yeah. Wow. Then it, becomes, then it does become a runaway train. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I find really interesting is that his death happened during a uh, young earth as well. So again, it was almost as though he had so much support that it, again, mm -hmm. it became a runaway train. By the time he had already... Um, so to speak, pulled the trigger on all of the things that connected him to be the leader and to have this control and have a siege that lasted what it says 59 days. Mm -hmm. It was out of his control at that point. Yeah, I wonder how many people within that compound or in his world were trying to get through to him, were trying to, you know, tell him this is what we should be doing, this is what we should be doing. And so I think at some point he even isolated himself in a room yeah. and was only talking to the FBI people. And now they're in, because that's earth energy. That's mm -hmm. how that shows up in your chart. If this element is higher than yours, you're depending on too much input coming in from other people, what mm -hmm. they think should happen, yeah. what they want you to do. Mm -hmm. Rather than it being supportive, it's now becomes controlling. Mm -hmm. And so he's... So for him to isolate himself in a room, because there was over 700 phone calls between him and the FBI agents. Oh, I didn't know that. During that 59 days. So now they're in his head. And so he's thinking, the only way I can control this is to stand my ground, right? And and because if I surrender, then what does that say about me? It, it's got to be, how did they kill themselves? Um. I I think he was, like I said, I think there were some people that died in the fire, some people that were shot, um, and it's unclear how he he died. He was he was shot, um, but he received a shotgun wound from someone in the FBI, okay. and it wasn't clear if he died of that gunshot wound or uh, another gunshot wound. Okay. But he was, he was, when they found him, he was away from a lot of the followers. Mm -hmm. It was kind of a situation that was, rather than it being as strategic as the other cult leaders or mass suicides, mm -hmm. where they were all in one place, they were in a huge compound and they were kind of scattered yeah. throughout the whole way go. Yeah, he didn't um, have a plan. There was no, mm -hmm. I don't think they had a plan to kill themselves either, or else they you know, would have been different. Like yeah. with Jim Jones, you know, they practiced the suicide run. You yeah. know, they everybody else seemed to have an, an out. Yeah. Um, of course, except for L. Ron Hubbard, but because they're those people are still caught up in that. Yeah. This is such an interesting, and I also read that his mom had him when she was fifteen. You know, so to not really have that, it's it's interesting though that she was young metal. Um to his yeah. yin metal yeah. that shows a motherly relationship. Yeah. Hmm. And it wouldn't necessarily be all that negative mm -mm. when you look at the elements. No, but he was also obsessed with rock and roll and sex and, um, 
Wow. This, you know, having, it's, you know, we've talked about the monkey kind of lacking empathy, but then you've got the dragon in there too that really um, is detached emotionally. Mm -hmm. He's really able to de almost remove himself from his own body yeah, um, and be detached from that, any kind of emotional experience. It just felt like he had so much coming in directed at him like ideas yeah. and this is what we should do or you need to be doing this and he d he didn't have he doesn't have enough self energy here to be able to discern what's coming in and go right. oh well, that's bullshit I'm not listening to you yeah or to go oh no that's a really good idea we should implement that well and when you've got a monkey in your mind pillar mm. Monkeys are not going to be the most efficient at calculating which idea is correct and which idea is not. Yeah. They're going to be like, oh, oh, oh. It's kind of like a schizophrenic mm -hmm. energy of, oh, which, you know. Yeah. He is the best. Which one, which way do we go? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. He feels so troubled, you know, yeah. just really didn't know who he was and, and what he wanted. Yeah. Everything else was kind of pushed upon him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, absolutely fascinating conversations. Who are we yeah. going to do next? Five, five interesting people. Yeah. Five very interesting people. So we have done um, Biden and Harris, the huh? president and the vice president. We've done Britney Spears. Which... If you haven't seen the Britney Spears one, please watch it because a lot of the things that we said in that recording are happening right now. Yep. She, yeah, she just appeared in court, court last week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of the things that we said in the last recording, we thought this would be a really good year for her to find her voice mm -hmm. and to see it all start to roll in her direction. I yeah. Think that's the direction things are starting to happen. Mm-hmm. So if you have any ideas of who you want, like for those of you who are watching this, if there's a group of people or somebody that's interesting in the news, um, drop it down in the comments below. Let us know yes, um, so that we can put some put our energy together. I We've spent an hour just catching up before this we hit record. And so whenever I can, you know, team up with you, Jeremy, and, and share ideas and knowledge and insights around this kind of stuff I always learn from you and it's just so much fun yeah. um, doing this and of course this is meant for entertainment we're not here to call anybody out point figures no. point fingers or even say that if your chart looks like this that you know you're going to be a the FBI next time the doorbell <laughs> rings no. um, it's just a perspective it's just yeah. a, a way that we as practitioners um, can keep our, our chops, you know, polished and, and stay on top of our game and challenge what we see. And because it kind of gets, you know, I, I'm always telling my students, practice, 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 pull charts of people that show up on the news and people in our world, because we can see them. Then mm -hmm. we can look at the chart and make the connection. And that helps us understand these animals and these elements you know, the next time that a client that we don't know wants, yeah. needs a reading from us. Yeah. So, um, yeah, share with us what you like or don't like about these. And if somebody is you find absolutely fascinating, let us know. I don't think either one of us, I let me know if I'm speaking out of turn here, Jeremy. I don't think we want to necessarily get down a, a super political path or... Um, get involved in that kind of energy and discussion mm -hmm. we're here more about just you know pointing out the highs and the lows of somebody their strengths and their weaknesses mm -hmm. because like you said you know here's this fire energy this is how it kind of played out in this one person's chart versus you know this other person's chart mm -hmm. do you want to add anything on to this before we well, also feel free to comment below um, what you think about the information that we've given. Mm -hmm. uh, just any insights that you thought about while we were going over the charts. Um, any similarities that you noticed that we maybe didn't notice. Mm -hmm. Please point those things out because we'd love to get your feedback. 
we'd love to get your feedback on again like what you said um, about future future episodes what you would like us to cover um, if there's something in the charts that we um, haven't covered that you would like us to cover that would be helpful information mm -hmm. yeah <sighs> this was fun thank you it was fun it's not as heavy as the last group huh no i found myself laughing a lot while i was doing research mm -hmm. yeah i mean it's unfortunate that people so many people's lives were ch were changed by these yeah, you know these decisions these adults made, but they were adults too, and that's part they of were. their path. And it's we're all part of this bigger picture. Um, yeah, it would. I wonder too if if even looking at maybe doing some charts around some some events that have occurred. Yeah. And we could do like even this this Miami hotel um, Miami condo situation. You know, like yeah. pull a chart for the timing of when that occurred. Nine mm -hmm. eleven you know, or the, the big tsunami in Japan a few yeah. years back, if it might be worth looking at those kinds of energies, because it's not just about people, right? It's about events and the, the energy of what's happening so that we can stay on top of that. That yeah. might be worth looking at as well. Yeah. Um, I, I also do Western astrology and uh, about a year ago, year and a couple months ago here in Utah, we had an earthquake. And we were able to look at the chart and that and track how the exact timing of that was was um, in the chart. So mm -hmm. we'll be able, we can do that as well. That would be really interesting. Mm -hmm. Different events and places. Yeah, that's always fascinating. Whenever something happens, I go pull a chart. Yeah. To see to see why whether it's somebody who passed away, or you know an event like this. These things that are happening these days and they're just. Oh, there's just so many of them. I pulled a chart for um, the other day for the when the Derek Chauvin um, trial came to a close and they read the verdicts. It was a four two, all four tomb animals were in the four pillars that day, and talk about a shift in in the earth. Yeah, like that was a shift. So whether whether they were guilty or not guilty it created a shift on this planet in a big way. And yeah. so he is a key player in that. And, you know, sometimes there's those spiritual warriors that appear on our planet as assholes or cult leaders or, you know, uh, mean people um, or serial killers. They're here to be a part of the shift of the consciousness on the planet. Unfortunately, yeah. You know, so much of our culture, um, our human connectedness, what brings us together is is trauma, is mm -hmm. a death in the family or a death in the neighborhood or a crisis. Then we come together again as a community and it shifts, you know, our connections and our shifts our consciousness and our awareness and it, it promotes change for, the, you know, the next time so it doesn't happen again. And so mm -hmm. we need these key players on the planet it's part of the contrast of living here mm -hmm. on this fabulous planet um yes perhaps someday we won't have to deal with the contrast of the energy of the planet i don't know it may, it may always be a part of our experience here but times are shifting and please stay tuned because within months we're shifting into a new year that is a serious big profound energy that's yeah. going to shift things in a big way. And it's it's worth, you know, staying connected here. So subscribe here um, on this YouTube channel so that you are aware and know when the next things are coming up. And hopefully you're following Jeremy and I on our social media and stuff. The links are, are below so that you're a part of this ongoing conversation because mm -hmm. we're going to be talking about that soon as well. Yeah. Um, so we all have our place. If we can just be the dragon once in a while, pull out, see the bigger picture, and not be so caught up in the minutia and the drama and the turmoil of the moment, but really pull out and trust the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes there's comfort in that. It's a little bit scary, but sometimes that's where you can find your comfort is to have faith in that there's something greater that we don't, our little minds don't know how to tap into yet. Yeah. 
Thank you, my friend. Thank you. It was fun. Yeah. Goodbye, everyone. Have a wonderful day wherever you are, and we will see you when we see you. Bye.